Hello YouTube, I'm El Worf, and today we're going to be talking opening strategies with today we're going to be talking about England, a wonderful country, one of my favorite countries to play in this game. Personally anyway, I mean, you're, you're, everyone's always of course free to have their own opinion about what their favorite country is, but we're going to be focusing mostly on, uh, on England. So, what do we, uh, what do we have at our disposal here? Well, England is one of two countries that starts off with two fleets. Uh, the other country, of course, being Russia, who gets two fleets. But uh, England can use its fleets a little bit more uh, diversely than if, say, for example, uh, we were talking about Russia. So what is the, uh, what are the options for England? So England uh, gets a fleet. It can do what, what's considered the standard opening, which is to go into the uh, into the Norwegian Sea here, right? Uh, then you get uh, go London into the North into the North Sea, and then you have uh, the, your Liverpool army go into Edinburgh. Now that's the uh, obviously that's the first one because what you're doing in this scenario is you're looking to maybe push this way. You know, maybe with uh, a convoy into Norway, maybe a move into Holland, or perhaps maybe you just go straight into there and then convoy that way. Different options, or what in my opinion is one of the crazier options is you do fleet into Denmark, convoy to Norway. That's also pretty standard, typical openings, although keep in mind, you can't do the play into Denmark unless you do, unless well, it's complicated with Germany. We'll get into that. So those are the standard openings for, in terms of the most common. Uh, you also do, however, as, as you pro probably would assume, do have an opportunity to go the other direction. So you can go into the English Channel, North Sea, and then for this guy, he would go, you have an option. So this is the first part where you get a choice. You do, it's a signal thing. So you're either signaling, assuming he makes it, like let's say France goes to, to Bre yeah, the Brest fleet, goes to the Mid-Atlantic. Say you're in this position, well, uh, the way the rules work is if you uh, attack something that's convoying over, you cut the convoy. The convoy doesn't happen. So it is a safer play to go Yorkshire. Be However, you do also run the risk of this Denmark fleet doing it, the, uh, the cutoff. Of course, it doesn't know you could always go Norway and Brest. So there's some options there as England. But the most common play to do in, in this scenario, this is assuming there's no bounce. If there's a bounce, we'll get to that. Uh, but in this scenario, uh, because on your first move, you presumably go to Yorkshire because that's the, most, the more easily understandable play. And it's a less clear indication of what you're doing because you could argue you're just convoying to Norway. Uh, but no one knows that yet. Uh, so one thing uh, that you might th consider is doing um, a convoy to Norway, then moving this fleet from English Channel to Belgium. So that's a really cool part, uh, because what you could do is, uh, as France, if you're in this position, say your first move was Burgundy. Uh, I'll move the camera. Say your first move as France is the, the Burgundy opening, right? So that way you're set up like that. Well, if, if England is in the English Channel, uh, since we know that France will probably have to, to you know, return to, to Paris, or they might even go Belgium. If I was France, I would maybe go Belgium, Brest, and Portugal to come back, or just do the Mars, you know, or just do that move over there. So it's all very, very much a little confusing. But again, in traditional opening style like that for France, with England like this, I would say England wants to go to Belgium. And then that way they're making two, because England is trying to get their second one, right? Because they already know they can get their first one. Uh, for example, another option under this method, uh, assuming we're back here, this is the first move. Say we go to Wales, we can also, we also might see, depending on what France does, we might see a convoy into Belgium from the, uh, from this boat with support from the North Sea into there. And then they get a gain that way, they build another fleet etc etc so that's a pretty interesting way to do it because what you're saying is essentially hey germany you you can't stop this germany has no way to stop this move if if you go liverpool to wales and you are say on good in, in your first move say this is the end of the first move if you say hey france 
I'm not going to hurt you. I still want the alliance. I just want to hit Germany quickly. Instead of doing the Norway approach, you could... And now this, you got to be careful about Denmark. You got to hope that Denmark is going to stop the... Uh, you have to hope that the Denmark fleet is going to stop these Russians from getting that. Because while Russia generally doesn't expect to get this one, if it does, that gives them a humongous advantage. So generally the Denmark fleet should, in a standard German opening, of course, should be going after that one, meaning this one is safe to give support to this guy, to this army moving in, making it, uh, if you can see on the, the borders, uh, this army would not be able to give support. So that means the army in Ruhr would be unable to do so, in which case the safe play is to have the Ruhr army support uh, Holland, right? So then Germany would only get two instead of three, and as per usual, England only gets one, but it's one would now be, you know, in the subsequent turns, uh, you, you'd build in Edinburgh, in Edinburgh with a fleet. And then what you're doing is you're considering, well, what if I do a, a shuffle like that? Oh, sorry. You, you do this kind of a shuffle, right? Where you, you take these and you, you move them. So then you support yourself into Norway, or I guess you'd want to be supporting here. You never want to, as England, important note, you never want to give up the North Sea. Uh, you England starts with North Sea access. Germany does not, because a German open place opening placement is to is this uh, in the in the beginning of the game. So uh, England right away has two fleets into the North Sea. So there's no reason England should ever give up North Sea. If England gives up North Sea, that's pretty much it. Something interesting, uh, and we'll get to Germany in another video, of course. But if Germany goes Holland. Uh, Kiel and Ruhr, uh, what you're doing, what, what they're signaling is that they're not stopping uh, the Russians going into uh, Sweden. And in which case, if they're doing that, or I guess in this case not doing that, uh, then you know that there's going to be an alliance here, which means as England, if you do the standard opening, uh, if you went this way, and you see this kind of a movement as England, then what you're seeing is essentially the fact that you're going to have to deal with the fact that uh, Germany is very much likely possibly allying with Sweden to go around and go to uh, to Norway, essentially, in its, in its subsequent moves to gain the support to get the two-on-two -two strike, which means that this fleet might even consider... Uh, oh, sorry, this would be in Yorkshire. You wouldn't... You wouldn't go to Edinburgh unless you're... If you go to Edinburgh, you're signaling a con convoy into Norway that way, uh, much more possibly moving something like this to convoy into the north... Uh, to convoy into the north coast is what you're signaling by putting an... Uh, by moving to Edinburgh and doing the double move, uh, which would be, for the record, the first move is this, then the second move is this with that army holding, uh, if you're doing it that way. But let's not worry about that for now. But it's more, more or less, we should be focusing our attention uh, mainly on... Uh, mainly on what we need to worry about is England, right? So England is, again... They're much easier to play, uh, I'd argue, in the beginning than some of the other factions. Germ you know, the central three, which we'll cover um, in a moment. England being the, the third most common winner. They win, uh, they're ranked three out of ten in terms of their win, win rate. Uh, the main reason being that their first move, this opening move, can never be uh, the, York, you know, the Yorkshire, North Sea, uh, uh, then Norwegian. Norwegian Sea, those, that, this move is unblockable, their first move, whereas some other countries, their first moves are blockable. And in fact, even if you get the worst case scenario, which is that Kiel goes to Holland, um, Belgium, uh, or Ruhr, and, you know, if you, get, if you get a Germany that does this, worst case scenario, and even if you have a Swedish, you know, even if you have this, even if you're in this scenario... Right, where you where after two turns of movement, of course, because, you know, because, um, for example, the movement would be uh, Mosque, uh, for the record, to be Russia going uh, to St. Petersburg, then with support from, well, not with support, but these two would be, I guess, simultaneously taking two, in which case you would, you'd be struggling at that point. Uh, you might even bounce and not get anything, because then Russia would get a gain on you, and they would see that you're going north, right? So that's the doomsday scenario. Provided you're allied with France, um, you are not totally devastated because your counter to this is you take the North Sea and support the convoy of the army into Norway, and that's how you do it. 
uh, essentially, because you never give up the North Sea. That's a, just for the record, that's a rule as England, if you play England, never remove your fleet from the North Sea. Uh, you can shuffle, so that way some guys move in at the same time, uh, but you want to be careful of the, the ho of Holland or Denmark, because Germany will own one of those. Uh, as far as I know, there's no way to get Ger keep Germany from owning Denmark and Holland. Uh, that's just that's just that's just how it works. Uh, that's I guess one advantage of Germany. Germany knows it'll get at least one build, but the thing is Germany's trying to get two, three if it's lucky. Um, getting your second build as England is the hardest part, and I'm going to show you now, in my opinion, the best way for England to achieve getting two builds instead of one. This will require diplomacy, of course. That's part of the game but I think it's important to illustrate. So I'm going to move everyone back to their start positions, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you, in my opinion, the best way uh, for everyone to, you know, the, be the best way to, to do it. So, turn one, right? Let's, uh, let's, um, let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah. You can kind of see it, right? Let me move closer. Just readjust, because this is a pretty dynamic way of playing England, which I, which, and this is, again, the objective way, but... Let's say, for example, you have peace with France. As long as you have peace with France, you can, in my opinion, you can achieve two builds uh, pretty well. Because what you're doing is you're essentially going to be speaking to Germany at the same time. and you're, Or you'll convince France to go into Burgundy, which you want France to do. If France goes into Burgundy, then they threaten, and, and Germany does the standard move, then what you, what you do... Uh, on England, your play to get two builds is you do the English Channel, you do uh, North. Uh, no, sorry, you do the standard opening. Actually, if you do the standard opening, you actually come out. Oh, okay. no, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the mathematical way you do it. Yeah, you want to do that opening, the opening that looks like you're attacking France, but you're really not because English Channel connects to Belgium. So how are you doing this? Uh, essentially, what's going to happen is you're going to have the French. Uh, well, because you can, as long as Italy is being nice, uh, France gets two builds by, um, by doing their Spanish stuff down here, right? That's what they would do. Uh, what you do is you have this Burgundy support Wales into Belgium and North Sea goes to Norway. That's the way it would work, uh, to get your two builds. And because they, this won't happen... If you get support, this will definitely happen, and the likelihood of black uh, or of Germany giving Sweden to Russia is very unlikely. Now, if and plus, it's the second turn. Germany doesn't want to let go of Denmark. If Germany goes to North Sea, they are down by. They only get one build. And they have to build an army because of the way that the game is set up. If they don't get an army, they can't beat... They just can't do it mathematically. So this is the only... You need French support to get to safely. And then what you do is England, by the way. Uh, build fleets. You don't need armies. Uh, what you're doing is you're essentially going to do nor the northern play. You all you want to build fleets in London and Edinburgh. Never build in Liverpool uh, unless it... You know, unless you get three builds, uh, just because you have Liverpool can only go to the Northern Atlantic or the Irish Sea. So then, in this position, look at that. You're, you're a much stronger England. I mean, uh, even if even if Germany makes the choice to build their one thing as a fleet, they're they're landlocked. That that's not going to help them. Uh, and besides, Germany would likely they want an army, uh, preferably in Munich. So they're not going to have quite as much of an opportunity to deal with to deal with certain situations. So. Let's go ahead and talk about the, some interesting scenarios. For example, the English-German alliance. Well, uh, as you saw uh, previously, uh, I'll go ahead and get rid of that. Go back to starting position, because I like going back to starting positions anytime we talk about a new strategy. If we're, if we're dead set on making sure that Germany is our ally, well, what we do is we go Norwegian Sea, we go English Channel, and Wales. Why are we doing this? Because it's a signal to Germany, well, actually, uh, Go Northern Sea anyway. Now that I think about it, just go Northern Sea. I think it's better. Because uh, Germany, what they're going to be doing is they're going to, because it's the safe move, you're going to sacrifice Sweden uh, in this scenario. You're going to tell them to do this move. You want Germany to do that move. Because, uh, and that's assuming, of course, by the way, this doesn't work if France uh, does the bounce. Then you're in this scenario with France, and that's just horrible. And if that does happen, um, 
you essentially move into Norway and you give up the, and you move, do you do that? And you just, you just do that if you get bounced, but I don't think you'll get bounced if you have a strong relationship with France. So if you're, if you want to ally with Germany as England, you want to make sure that your friend France thinks they're on your side for the first turn. Cause what you want to happen is France to feel comfortable going from, you know, Paris and doing Marseille. You want France to, to, to feel comfortable doing its standard openings, right? So, so that's kind of a key part of it. Um, so then when you're in this position, what you essentially do is you say, okay, uh, I know France is going to come here. You, you know France is going to do that. What you're, what you're going to ask is, in or, in, for the sake of the alliance, since uh, they're going to take Denmark, um, so you need to be careful about this, but essentially what you, what you need to convince Germany to do is let you take um, Belgium. You need to just let them take it, and you support yourself into Belgium. Um, now, depending on what uh, they do, Germany might make the choice to, to go here. If Germany ties you and gets supported out, you get stuck, which uh, is a bit of the risk. So again, uh, allying with Germany is hard as England. I, I, I would personally, as England, oh. personally as England, I would rather be allies with France just because you have more attacking potential. Now, if you're allies with Russia and you somehow pull this off, because it's important, you know, we got we to gotta think about the global picture here, right? So uh, if at the end of turn one, it looks like this and say, uh, so here's another, another interesting thing. If you can convince Russia to go to Silesia instead of Galicia, if Silesia is here and uh, the first move is this one, this setup, Germany has to move and you, what you would do, they have to move to Berlin or to Munich. You would suggest Munich. You want to suggest Munich as England. Uh, Germany would much rather do Berlin and then get the two that way because it gets supported in. But you don't want to tell them that. Tell, in, to, uh, tell them that they need to go there. Uh, a scared German player will go backwards into both and only make one gain at, at Holland, which is arguably a much more disadvantageous position. Uh, Germany would rather be in Denmark at that point. Uh, but then, but the point is, if Russia's here, they are at the risk of 50-50. It's a guessing game. A scared Germany will either, uh, will either move both back or they'll just make a, risk, a risky play. But the point is, if Russia goes in, you know that you have better odds of doing something like convoy into Belgium with, again, and again, that's why I emphasize having allies with France, have an ally of France to support and you perhaps you can even go into Denmark if you think they're going to fall back. You could go to Denmark and be much more aggressive. Uh, and in my opinion, that's the better way. Now, if you're going to do the plan where you work with Germany, you could even tell Germany that it's okay for him to pull back. Let him have Denmark. Uh, this guy would want to move to Munich, right? You go to Norway as England, and then you're in this position. So, and what you do is this Holland fleet would be supporting that move. And then what it looks like is it looks like oh you're attacking, but really what you're in order to make the deal work you have to you have to escort Germany into uh, Burgundy and then they'll they'll cover Paris likely uh, because they'll have a bill and stuff. Again, you see how you see how that that kind of plays out in effect. Um, again, with Russia being very useful here. Uh, another minor thing to point out with England, you do benefit a lot if you can get Italy to do the Piedmont. Uh, Venice move if you can get Italy to do that and you want to attack France it makes it much easier because what's happening is if this is your first move and you and France does standard opening what you do is uh, if you want to be a real jerk you tell uh, Italy to support Spain into Marseille because a typical French move um, and they, again, this is typical French moves. Obviously, people will do different things. I can't predict everything. But the, the general thing people do is they'll have Spain attack here or have Burgundy attack here. Like, they'll have them both attack. So that way, whether or not uh, this guy attacks, there'll be a bounce all the way around and everyone goes back to normal and they're free to build there. Italy can do an interesting thing where they support the Spanish army into Marseille, giving them a strength of two against the French's own unit of uh, Burgundy of one. So then they go in, and I know on the camera it looks like they're all the same color. Uh, then then there's a, a situation that looks like this, which looks really bad for France. If you're hurting France, that is. 
Uh, so that's one thing you can do, and it also means you could even, because they might be scared about the fact that you move there, you expect them, you're not getting breast, by the way, just to be clear. There's no, if you ever order anything into breast, that's pretty much it, because uh, what, you're, you're, what you're trying to do is get into Belgium. Right, because if England gets onto Belgium, which they generally don't do, uh, again, typical, typical play gets you Norway in this position. Uh, just so you know, this is typical English play. You're, you, then you only get one build generally, and then you build fleet in London because it has the most variety, and it signals a non-Russian attack, which is very important. So that's about it for England. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions about any of these, I'm happy to go into deeper scenarios. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn my t attention to the next country. So, as always, I'm El Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.